Many people in the F1 community have very strong opinions when it comes to Lewis Hamilton. Certainly when it comes to how great of a driver he is, and where he ranks amongst the all-time greatest drivers, making him such a divisive topic. But in this video I am going to give my opinion on Lewis Hamilton, and on his entire F1 career and how great of a driver Lewis is. To find out what I have to say, check out this video. So let's start from the start of Lewis Hamilton's F1 career in 2007, where he finally got the chance to race for his boyhood team, McLaren, alongside two-time reigning world champion Fernando Alonso. And boy, did he give us a lot to talk about from 2007, as not only did he go head-to-head -head with Fernando Alonso in that season, he came one point away from winning the Drivers' Championship in what was a thrilling fight for the world title. But unfortunately for Lewis, after leading the championship for so long during the summer, it all went wrong in the final two races in Shanghai and Sao Paulo. First in Shanghai, where he got beached in the gravel trap in the entry to the pit lane. Then in the race at Brazil, he had a bad start and then he had a gearbox problem. Meaning that in the final two races, he only scored two points, whilst Kimi Raikkonen scored 20. And that's what gave Kimi Raikkonen the championship. Now I know Lewis was unlucky at the end of 2007, but this is why I don't think he did deserve to win the title. It's nothing really to do with him. It really comes down to Spygate in my opinion. There is clear evidence that once McLaren knew some quite confidential information from Ferrari, they did gain a lot of performance and an unfair pace advantage. And because of that whole story, I don't see how McLaren or their drivers deserve to win the championship. Again, it's not Lewis's fault, but that's just the way it is. I don't think Lewis would have been as competitive with his results if McLaren did not do what they did, which is use Ferrari's information to their own good. But after a very rough relationship with Fernando Alonso, Fernando left McLaren and in came Heike Kovalainen, a teammate that Lewis knew he could absolutely destroy. And in 2008, he won his first world championship. And he won it in what was probably the most famous moment in the history in Formula 1 at Brazil. But overall, during 2008, did Lewis Hamilton actually deserve it? Well, in my opinion, even though he did have some great drives, for example, at Monaco and Silverstone, I don't think he did. I thought personally over 2008 that Felipe Massa drove better. And I thought also Lewis made a lot more mistakes than Felipe Massa. Those mistakes really cost him at races such as Canada, France and Japan. And very nearly as well Brazil. Don't get me wrong he did have a great year but I don't think he was as good as Massa. And Massa in my opinion had some bad luck in 2008 as well. But nonetheless Lewis won his first world title in 2008 and was looking to build on that for 2009. Unfortunately for him though, the 2009 McLaren was dreadful, as in the first half of the season it was basically a midfield car, and finishing in the points for McLaren was basically like a race victory. But McLaren made sure to improve the 2009 car so Lewis could get two victories during 2009, in both Hungary and Singapore. But for 2010 with now the world champion Jensen Button coming aboard, Lewis was hoping that the McLaren of 2010 could sustain a title challenge against Red Bull and Ferrari. And for most, if not all of 2010, they did. And Lewis was actually leading the championship for quite a long time during the summer. But then once we got to the Italian Grand Prix and the Singapore Grand Prix, Lewis made crucial mistakes, which cost him in the end two podium finishes. Now granted the McLaren car in 2010 pace wise was not good enough anyway to win the championship but he was leading it for quite a long time and I think he could have done better towards the end of that season but those mistakes unfortunately for Lewis carried into 2011 which for me is his breaking point as a driver because in 2011 he had so many crashes and made so many mistakes and was getting criticism from left, right and centre. And he knew at this point he had to improve or else he was not going to be a success going forward. And after getting soundly beaten by Jensen Button also in 2011, he had to improve. 
And not only did he improve for 2012, but so did the McLaren car. And he put in some great drives in 2012, for example, in Canada, Hungary, and also the US Grand Prix. But what cost Lewis was a lack of upgrades to the McLaren car and also unreliability. The unreliability cost him massively at Singapore and Abu Dhabi when leading both of those races. And he reached another breaking point as he now left McLaren for Mercedes in 2013. And this at the time was a shocking decision to say the least. As at the time it didn't really seem to be the best move but it did pay off in the end. As in 2013 Mercedes were a lot more competitive compared to McLaren. As Lewis had some pole positions and one race victory. But then once the V6 hybrid era came around in 2014 Mercedes now had the best car on the grid by an absolute mile. And it was now effectively a guarantee that Lewis would go for the championship. And in 2014 he had a very hard fought and epic battle with Nico Rosberg. And this battle ebbed and flowed all the time during 2014. With famous moments between the two in Monaco, Canada, Hungary, Spa and also Japan and the US Grand Prix. They were going at it so hard head to head. But in the end Lewis came out on top and won his second world title. Now in my opinion Lewis did deserve to win the championship because he had more bad luck than Nico and I thought he drove better than Nico during 2014. Let's not forget the three races in a row which were Hockenheim, Hungary and Spa where Lewis had a lot of bad luck. In qualifying at Hockenheim his brakes failed. And then in qualifying in Hungary his power unit caught fire. And then he was effectively took out at Spa by Nico Rosberg. And had to overcome a 30 point deficit to Nico to win the title. So for me in 2014 Lewis was the clear and deserving winner. And the same goes for 2015 where he won his third world championship. And during his time as a teammate to Nico Rosberg this was Lewis's best season in my opinion. As for most of 2015 he dominated Nico. With those dominant performances including races like Australia and Canada. And was essentially flawless during 2015. And then he won the title in style at the 2015 US Grand Prix. Lewis now was on a massive high and it didn't seem that anything could stop him. But in 2016 two things did. One Nico Rosberg and two unreliability. As in three or four of the races Lewis did suffer some misfortune. At races such as Shanghai, Russia and especially Malaysia. Now don't get me wrong Nico Rosberg in 2016 had his best season ever in terms of his driving. And against Lewis he did drive very well I'm not doubting that. But in my opinion Lewis deserved to win the title in 2016. Because the number one reason why Lewis did not win the championship was because of unreliability. And that is not down to driver skill that is just plain bad luck. So for me in 2016 Lewis deserved to win that championship hands down. But now Nico Rosberg had retired surprisingly from the sport at the end of 2016. Lewis had to respond in 2017 when he went up against Sebastian Vettel and Ferrari. And he did. As after a very tough fight in the first three quarters of 2017. In the last quarter of the season Lewis produced when it mattered. Picking up vital victories in the second half of the season at Singapore and Suzuka. And then he won his fourth driver's title in Mexico. And you shouldn't forget it was a very tough battle for Lewis during this season. As Vettel was leading the championship until the Italian Grand Prix. So at no point was Lewis comfortable he was always under pressure. And once Vettel cracked under the pressure Lewis rose to the top. And that essentially is the same story for 2018 as well. During the first three quarters of the season the title battle between Hamilton and Vettel was very close. But again Vettel cracked under pressure and Lewis rose to it. With some great drives especially at Monza and Singapore. And in my opinion over the course of 2018 he didn't have the fastest car. And that's what makes his fifth world title even more impressive. And he also won his 5th world title just in the place where he won his 4th title in Mexico. And without a doubt he was 100% deserving. And now Lewis sits at the very top of Formula 1 as its best driver. 
But what exactly about Lewis's driving makes him the best driver? Well, for one, it is his raw speed, especially when it comes to qualifying. By the time Lewis retires, he could probably be the greatest qualifying driver of all time and has a realistic chance of having 100 pole positions before he retires. Now, I know he has had plenty of good cars, but that is still very impressive. He is also very aggressive and measured when overtaking and defending. But compared to his old self, he knows when to pick a fight and not to pick a fight. And is a lot more smarter of a driver than he was, say, back in 2010. But what makes him so unbeatable right now is that he is so consistent. You literally have to make no mistakes during the season to beat Lewis Hamilton in a championship battle. Because if you do, Lewis will capitalise and destroy you. That's what happened to Vettel once he made that crucial error at Hockenheim. And that's why right now Lewis is so hard to beat. But of course there are areas of his game where he's not so strong. Sometimes Lewis can be a bit disinterested, especially when the car is not working. For example, races like Shanghai or Canada in 2018. I know in Canada he did have some reliability issues, but I think he was a bit unhappy about the car's performance. And yes, he does moan quite a bit. But that is what racing drivers do, I'm afraid. So after all the success that Lewis has had, how does he compare to the all-time greatest drivers? Well, for me right now, he's not yet as good as Senna and Schumacher. But for me right now is about level of Juan Manuel Fangio. But I will say if he continues the success he's currently having, there is a possibility that Lewis could go down as the greatest driver in the history of Formula 1. Now what does he need to do for me to become the greatest driver of all time? Well for me he has to do three things. He needs to win two more world championships and of course deserve it and also overtake Michael Schumacher for having the most F1 victories of all time, and needs as well 100 pole positions. If he has all of that, then I would be willing to say that Lewis is the best driver of all time. But there is a long road ahead before that is even considered. So we'll see what happens to Lewis when it comes to those comparisons, but how does Lewis compare to the current crop of drivers? Well, as I said a minute ago, I think Lewis is the best driver on the grid. Compared to Vettel, I think Lewis is better in almost every area. For me, he is over a season faster than Vettel and is better overtaking and defending. And mentally is a lot stronger and is a lot more consistent. Compared to Verstappen, I don't think he is much faster than Max, but is mentally stronger and more consistent at the moment. And compared to all the other drivers, Lewis is clearly better. And that's why I rank Lewis right now as the best driver. But now, in a short interview with a Lewis Hamilton fan, I am going to ask this person what exactly he thinks of his favourite driver. Let's hear what he has to say. Right, so I'm here with Jordan, who is a Lewis Hamilton fan, and I'm going to ask him a few questions about Lewis Hamilton and his thoughts about him and his career, and again, his thoughts about him as a driver. So, first off, let's ask you, um, when it comes to Lewis Hamilton, what made you become a fan of Lewis Hamilton? Uh, he's just got a natural talent for driving everything about it. Right, so let's just go straight into his Formula 1 career. So, 2007 and 2008 were, for a rookie or a, you know, a young driver at that point, was so impressive. Mm -hmm. He came one point away from winning it in 2007 and won it just in 2008. How impressive for you were those first couple seasons for Lewis? It was great, you know. A rookie, and he came in and challenged Alonso, who was the, the reigning champion at the time. And and then you come to 2011. Now, in my opinion, a season where... I don't know what you think, but... In my opinion, that was like his breaking point. That's where he... After that season, he continuously improved and hasn't really looked back. And that season, I think, built the driver that Lewis Hamilton is today. Yeah. What do you think about that? That was probably his low, his low point, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> They had some good drivers in Germany that year, Nürburgring. Yeah, but again, with the with the amount of incidents he did have, whether he was at fault or not, it was a very hard year for him because yeah. he was getting criticised left, right and centre. But a year after that, 
He then decided to leave McLaren and go to Mercedes. What did you think of that decision at the time? Do you think it was a good decision at the time, or were you a bit worried? I was a bit worried, but I think they were they were putting a lot of money into it, Mercedes, and he must have he must have known something. That you then have 2017 and 2018. Um, in my opinion, his best two seasons in F1. Yeah, I, I agree. And, well, what do you think about those seasons? How good was Lewis Hamilton? It's just brilliant. He's made very few mistakes, if, if any. The last question I want to ask is, um, where do you rank Lewis Hamilton all-time? Amongst, mm. say, Senna, Schumacher, Banjo, where do you rank him as, uh, as amongst the all-time great drivers? Uh, I normally put Senna at the top, and then I have a Schumacher or Lewis. It's very, it's very hard for me to decide. Jordan, thank you very much for this interview. Yeah, thank, thanks for talking. Thanks for having me on. But why exactly, guys, do I call Lewis Hamilton the most divisive driver in the history of Formula One? It's because, again, people have such strong opinions when it comes to him. And I'm sure based on the opinions that I have on Lewis and his career... There is going to be plenty of people that disagree with me a lot. And that is what makes him such a divisive and hotly debated topic. And this is just going to continue until he retires. But if you thought the debate about Lewis Hamilton was strong enough, well don't worry, it's going to get even stronger. Because I am sure the next debate will be soon enough, is Lewis Hamilton the best driver in the history of F1? And once we get to that, people are going to be very, very opinionated, including yours truly. And honestly, based on the way things are going in Formula 1 right now, that is going to be the next debate when it comes to Lewis Hamilton. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back on Saturday with a podcast discussing Sebastian Vettel. As well, don't forget to join my Discord server, link below in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. And comment down below what you thought of this video and what do you think about Lewis Hamilton as a driver and his career. But until next time guys, it's been me, Chazzer HD. goodbye.